practice. Here we go. Okay, welcome back everyone to episode three of The Corporate, The Mystic and The Money. We are so excited to be bringing this to you and thank you to those of us who are joining for the After Dark session that we're running in episode three and four. We appreciate you being here. Uh, this episode is all about loving your money and cultivating a new, appreciative, loving relationship with money so that you can align your purpose, lifestyle and career effortlessly with your money. And that's what we're here to talk about. Um, as I mentioned in the last episode, I take so much from these calls. I look forward to them. And while we're here to offer our perspectives to you guys, know that we're learning right alongside you. And that's exciting for us as well. Jen, um, would you just like to say hello and say, tell us what's been happening in the money space for you, loving your money in the past week or so since we've last connected? Me? Yeah, you. I <laughs> I have, I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know, Did it, was it me or was it Joe? Um, gosh, what's been happening for me? Lots, actually, lots in the, in the money space, in the um, having deliciously full weeks uh, with beautiful clients. Yeah, lots and lots, lots and lots. Yeah, I love it. I love the vibration of um, having my days filled with clients that I just love witnessing their transformations and I love seeing money come into my bank account. I also love seeing money go out of my bank account um, to set some beautiful luxe things up that I've got coming up on the Sunshine Coast at Mulaney, actually, Joe. Beautiful location in Mulaney. So mm. all the things, yeah, all, all, all been in full flow with all of it. Mm. What about you, Joe? <laughs> Yeah, so I was um, just saying very briefly prior to we started recording that um, I I'm doing something similar in so much as I'm jumping on a plane tomorrow and headed to Tassie just for four days, a bit of a luxury self-care thing. Um, and that's the that's the, the, the goal with this stuff, right? Like we, we want to be in flow, we want to be... Sorry, I'm on a Zoom call. <laughs> I've just got a guest at my door. Oh, okay. Work with ease and flow. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Ease and flow. Just going to mute Ange. Yeah. There you go. Keep going, Joe. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The joys of um of live <laughs> calls, hey? I do this all day, every day with colleagues. Um, yeah, and so for me this week, I mean, I get a lot out of this these sessions. I get a lot out of listening to you girls um, and just share that, you know, I'm... Um, guilty sometimes of remembering that whilst I want to be there for everybody all the time um, you know I haven't really taken stock of what it is that I desire and when we did that first call um, a couple of weeks ago and you were saying you know I need a desire diary I'm like you know what these girls are incredible because I actually had forgotten to do that for myself and then lo and behold I said I just need some time off I need some self-care not a lot just a day or two and then um, the universe provides, I get a phone call and my girlfriend said, uh, let's just, a, a friend of mine, she said, I've just finished my divorce. You've helped me heaps. You know, um, let's just go somewhere and celebrate. And I said, I can't, I've got all the, and then I, you popped into my head, you two. And I was like, actually, you know what? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And I will. And so I'm on a plane tomorrow at six o'clock to, to Tasmania for a luxury four day escape. Um, it's called Luxury Escapes. We go on a sailboat and all sorts of things. So it'll be fun. Yeah. We're good. Live fully. Stick with us. Stick boat. with us and you'll be, yeah, well, any, yeah. you'll be saying, everyone will be saying yes to themselves if you hang around um, Angie and I long enough. Exactly. I know that there's a couple of women on the call tonight that know fully they've got their desire journals and um, they, they're playing really big in their desire journals and Everything is about saying yes to what you desire and checking in with that. You know, what, what do I desire? You know, most of us can, can tell each other what we don't want, but, you know, when we actually are asked the question, what do you desire, we'll go blank. So it's just such a beautiful space to play in and it, it's such a great vibe to, to um, operate from as well. Mm. Mm. Well, on that note, I'm also in Mulaney, so that seems to be a theme tonight. I just took inspired action a few weeks ago to come up here to a beautiful cabin on a ridgeline in Mulaney and then 
um, some further inspired action to invite my mates to mates rates for neuro-linguistic programming and timeline therapy. And as a result, I'm on holidays, not alone, just me with my dog, but surrounded by some wonderful long-term friends who are paying me to help them with timeline therapy. I'm making money on holidays. And I just wanted sort of the notes I had for this was my holidays, even though I'm working and making money, it feels playful, it feels easy, there's nothing else. So like to me, there's not a lot of differentiation between work and play because it all feels like the same thing. And that's what happens when you align your purpose, lifestyle, career and money. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got some new clients coming in and Jody, I just wanted to tell you, I've got a raise account. I got the first email this week saying, you've invested a hundred bucks. I'm like, <laughs> That's that's a lot of rounding up. That's a lot Damn of it, did I? <laughs> like that's a lot of rounding up that I've done in the last week. I must be spending some money, hey? Yeah. Um, so anyway, I've got a raise a raise account and and I'm away. So thank you for that so, red hot. So week. you're you're essentially now investing in the top two hundred on the Australian stock exchange, and you're doing a strategy called dollar cost averaging, and what's one of the most successful strategies in fast tracks wealth creation. And at some point down the track, we'll put a gearing strategy with that and you won't know yourself. I cannot wait for our conversations. Um, <laughs> Diane, rock out. Yes, you've got a raise account. That's beautiful. Well done. Yes, I got um, mine too, but I, I've, I've stalled on the setup. I feel like I've stalled on the setup. So you just gotta I might need to get, get, it, Jen. get a techie queen. Yeah, um, I'm all, Angel, I might, I might need your help. Thank you. I'm on it. I'm on it. So this episode, ladies, is all about loving and making more money. And I actually just want to hear from the finance expert on this around, like, last week we gave some quick tips on how to make more money. Um, What are your absolute pearls of wisdom on making money and loving the money that you make? Let's start with you, Jo. Okay. Okay. Um, so the easiest thing to say is there's only three things that you have to learn around making money. Grab a notepad and pen, friends. And they all come down Even to though I'm grab- grabbing my notepad and pen. <laughs> Hooray! They all come down to three areas, right? If you can understand these three areas, everything becomes a lot easier. So there's only three areas in the world that you can ever make money, and every single asset class and investment falls into one of these three. Shares, property, and cash. So if you're a business owner, you're a 100% shareholder of your company. Shares. If you invest in, you know, America or, or Australia stock markets, you're investing in the top companies there, but you're still a shareholder. So mm-hmm. anyone that's got superannuation is essentially a shareholder. So that's remove that. some of the scariness around share yeah. trading, doesn't it? Totally, matter? totally. And yeah. so, the, so let's say you've got those three gamuts: shares, property, and cash. In relation to shares, you can invest direct equities. So you can buy BHP, you can buy CBA. Um, If you own a company, you're owning business, you're 100% shareholder of the business of Jody Nolan or the business of you, right? So this is where we start to break it into chunks of your financial planning because people go, I don't have anything. But, you know, I've got a coaching practice where I earn, you know, $40,000 a year. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a sellable commodity. That's huge. We can scale that. We can do stuff like, or people go, I've just got a cleaning business where, you know, I earn $20,000 a year while the kids are at school. Oh my God, that is, uh, you're a hundred percent shareholder of your cleaning business. That's scalable. You, that can be growth that, you know, it depends on the different stages in your life. So, so direct equities, you can buy managed funds, which is like your super where somebody else looks after it for you. Or you can, um, you can invest in um, like an index fund, which is pretty much what the girls have just done when they talk about the raise, because that is just however it's weighted into the market is how your funds are weighted. So for instance, if Commonwealth Bank makes up 3% of our stock market, then 3% of your $100 goes into Commonwealth Bank. That's how that investment works. So demystifying money is dead easy when someone explained it to you, right? It's just that 
advisors, people in our, my world, they go to great lengths to make it complicated so they can charge huge fees. And this is why this, these two have said to me, can you just talk to us about this? Because we need to demystify everything, right? We need to just get to the bottom of it. So that shares property. Property is like almost like the unaffordable Australian dream for many, just because interest rates are so low, the demands there. I can give you lots of reasons why you should invest in property and lots of reasons why you shouldn't, right? There's always both sides. If you're not investing into property yourself, as in you're paying off a home, um, think about doing things where you invest in a property trust. So investments that I buy, um, I buy like um, investments that have got West Farmers at, or Westfield shopping centres and the Len leases of the world and that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, maybe not something you want to do right now because we're at the top of market highs, but when everyone's running and going henny penny, the sky's falling in and our stock market's halved, you get your hundred bucks and you start doing things with it. Do you know? So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's, so there's that. Um, so people say I can never invest in property and I'm like, yes, you can. There's absolutely mm -hmm. ways that you can leverage whatever environment that you're in shares, property and cash now cash mm -hmm. is super safe very boring doesn't outperform inflation um you know uh and any and, and for people who are worried even the banks are going to go under bank bail, bailouts cash bans all of that sort of stuff i get it but as a bank manager that's that's very unlikely to happen greece is incredibly unlikely to happen in australia where you can only get 150 dollars a day out so depends on who you're listening to. But anyway, the cash side of it is also bonds. It's derivatives. It's very boring, solid. It's treasuries. It's all of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and all of that forms into that side of it. So cash, property, and shares, mm -hmm. they're the three asset classes. When mm -hmm. you start to work out you know, what they are, then each one of those have got capital growth where it grows from a dollar to a dollar and 20. And they've got rent or dividends or premiums so you've got capital growth and you've got money coming in coming in yes. do you know and and then that's it and then all you got to do is line all of those up and even if you're just putting like a hundred dollars a month into something um over time that will amass so but i mean obviously if you've got more money that you can you know money makes money mm. but once you start to get the mindset around this um it's exciting do you know what joe i wanted to i really want to jump in on this because whenever i'm around you i and i never used i just want to be transparent for anyone who's watching this who might have known me years ago you will know i never had the relationship with money that i have now I've dissolved, um, Ange and I both uh, certified in NLP and timeline therapy. I have dissolved all of my money stories through using those modalities. And what I love is how excited you get about money. When you say, um, oh, I've just got a cleaning business and, you know, it's only bring, it's just part time, it's a hobby, it's bringing in 20. And you get excited about that, you know, and you go, yeah, and it's called this. And as you were talking, I can feel myself going, yeah, this is, this is exciting, you know. And, it, you know, I think that is one of the, um, if we, we bring it back to what we're talking about tonight and, and that is, you know, loving your money, I think so many of us have such an, and I touched on this last week, if you want to, you know, tune in last week, but so many of us, and I was one of these people, had I had such a negative relationship with money because I was always in the I don't have any money. And it's just so not true. I mean, if you're watching this on a smartphone or whatever, you know, we're, we've all got money, you know, in some capacity. It's just how you look at that. And when I shifted my um, mindset around that and did the work to, to dissolve those limiting beliefs, you know, I play and I call it play. I play in cryptocurrency now, you know, and, and it's not big amounts, but it's fun. <laughs> you know, I love getting on and, and uh, I bought four I or five it. crypto, you know, uh, coins and, you know, and, I, and it's exciting. And, 
you know, for me with my business, one of the biggest shifts I've had with my business, and this is me, me on my own now is the, the first time I've had a business like this. Mm-hmm. I've had a chocolate shop in Montville. That was my first business. The most successful business model I ever ran from start to exit. It was just extraordinary. I used that completely for my MBA. Um, and then I had my own women's fitness business, which just blitzed it. It was an award-winning business. I had the magazine as well. And then, um, oh no, three businesses. And then I started a business from scratch from a business plan for two shareholders. So I, I've had a lot of businesses and been around business and I've never treated my business like, um, like a living, breathing person. And with my business now, I treat my business like it is a living, breathing human being. I ask my business every day, what does it require from me today? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I treat it like it's exciting. I treat it like we're doing things together. You know, I have just booked and paid for that space in Mulaney, um, which is coming up on the 9th of April. And that was something me and my business did together. You know, we, we were excited to do something with the money that the business brings in, in that area. And yeah, a bit like Ange, you know, I'm staying either side and doing some work and holidaying. And I did a post yesterday and in it I said, um, you know, I, I now have a business I don't actually need to take a holiday from because I've brought this beautiful, loving balance to my business and me being, you know, this, this, um, this, this one energy that works together. So I don't treat my business like something I'm beholden to. I don't treat my business like something that is hard work. I treat my business like this beautiful co-creator and, you know, and, and her and I, we, we co-create together. We have fun together. I value her. She values me. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And that's when I see you talk about money, Joe, that's exactly what I receive is that excitement. You know, it's exciting. There's so many things we can do with, with even 20 bucks or no bucks on raise. Kind of feels yeah. like no bucks, right? Yeah, you literally <laughs> start with nothing. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And then you only need to go and check it. Like, I mean, I, I've got my children's accounts there and they get excited when they go and check it and you know there's 150 dollars in their account it might have taken them a year to get that but by the time they get to 17 and they're wanting a car and i'm going to match it dollar for dollar you know and they've but do you know what i mean so yes yes it's so it's just it's exciting it's the relationship with it isn't it it's the yeah. how you are how you treat it treat it like something you know that deserves you know that warrants respect and warrants your love and you know like it's your business partner right yeah. it's, it's your partner in life essentially and keep this in mind we're headed into economic uncertainty that's a given we've had stock market highs for 12 years we've got money printing we've got global deep it's deep it's a it's a deglobalization of our systems, right? So from a geopolitical aspect, none of that is to be frightened of. There's a lot of fear mongering around that. More millionaires are made in a downturn than ever in an economic upswing. So if you're listening to this, even on replay, play that this isn't lost on you because when everyone else is panicking, worried, they're in um, retreat, clutch, um, like I don't under, I don't know the terms for it. You two will be like all over the energy side of it, but they are going to be in like ah, oh, and then that's oh, where we're yeah. in ease and flow. We're like bring it on, and um, and you know not to be frightened of it because ten years from now, listening in on these things will be the best thing that you ever did. Mm-hmm. So what I'm extracting from what Jen has just offered is just this real sense of partnership and connection and love and respect for your business as the vehicle for making money. And what I'm extracting from Joe is once again, like last in the first couple of episodes, you encouraged us to face our money situation by committing it to paper. And today, again, you're encouraging us to face the opportunities to make more money by understanding things around shares, property and cash 
and the breakdown of that and to educate ourselves about it. And even though it can be scary and even though we might be embarrassed that late in life, we don't have this information yet or we don't have as an advanced understanding as we might, um, facing into the education that's available to you is only going to empower you. And that's a great summary. Just on a side note, you don't actually even really need to educate yourself. You just need to start. You know, you really just need to, because once you start thinking about it, um, it, it'll come to you. I don't know how that is. You two will be all over that. I don't know how that works. All I know is that if I want to start learning something more about something, it, it presents pretty much like if I buy a brand new Land Cruiser, all of a sudden I see all the Land Cruisers on the road, right? So um, even if you just say, I want to be more aware, it'll come It'll come to you in, in all sorts of ways. But I guess the biggest thing is this isn't scary. It's... Um, and, and my purpose is going to be down, like my whole purpose is around um, getting this education into our schools. So my legacy at some point down the track will be making this information available to everybody mm-hmm. in a forum that they understand because I love what you're doing here. And um, it, like lawyers, financial advisors, car salesmen, am I allowed to say that? People don't know who to trust yeah. you know like and they pay a lot of money and they're not quite sure so um yeah and I just think that um yeah if the if you know that there's people around who are happy to share the information it doesn't have to be um a minefield it doesn't have to be scary it doesn't have to be mm-hmm. rocket science and in fact some of your um readers and your members have reached out to me recently and said listen I'm I'm looking at doing this. What do you think? Yeah. And it's just a text message. It's just a little message on Messenger. And I'm able to respond and just take the the scary out of it and say, you know what, you're on the right path. Yeah, it hasn't cost them a cent bar five minutes of their time. So um, that's available, you know, to a, to a lot of people everywhere. Brilliant. I love that too, Joe. you know, on the education piece and I think that you know a lot of us can end up going down rabbit holes of not taking any action because we don't know enough something that's really served me in my life in the last few years is trusting myself and trusting what feels good you know I I move towards what excites me what feels good for me at this point in my life property doesn't excite me so I haven't you know, I don't have any property at all. Um, Shares, cryptocurrency, um, those things excite me. I want to actually learn more about NFTs because it's like, what? What the heck? This sounds really interesting. How exciting. And and just bringing it back to, um, you know, if, if you don't know what to do, at least start to go towards the thing that you are most excited about not what everybody's telling you you should be doing because if you move towards what everyone tells you you should be doing, you're going to be coming from a very low vibration. Go Mm. move always. This isn't just about money. Move always towards your highest excitement. If something doesn't excite you, don't go in that direction because it will A, be hard work, B, you will have to push, 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 and C, you'll end up um, spiralling and feeling deflated and feeling like I just don't enjoy this. This isn't fun anymore. So constantly move to what excites you. So find something inside of money that does excite you. Yeah, yeah. that's my, that would be my, and then, and then ask questions about that. Mm. Mm. So I might um, also just jump in here and offer what's been coming up for me lately around loving and making more money, loving, like changing my relationship with money. And I'll just do that through a few little short story examples. I shared with you last week that I'm making a play at the moment around um, a short-term overseas lifestyle. And since I've committed to that, I've created a bank account, I've named it, put the name of the place and how much, like, um, you know, fit the 50K that I want in there so I can go with ease. not only is more work coming, but more, you know, I'm seeing uh, flights advertised. I've had a referral from a friend who has an apartment in that beautiful European city um, who wants to rent it to me. <laughs> um, and I think once you commit to making the play, a bit like seeing the land cruise, cruises, Jody, the things will yep. start to appear. Exactly. And it, 
Another thing I've said, make a play and start to allow things to align. And alongside that, I've written here, I like to give my money a purpose and a place to go and a reason to be and a thing to serve. And so for me, the way I do that um, is I create accounts for like the big chunks of money that I need for things, or want for things, things that I desire. Um, I create places for that money to live so that when I'm ready to act on it, it's there, okay? Um, other things around money, I noticed on a phone conversation with a friend last night, we were talking about, I had some photography work done this week and a friend said to me, oh, was that contra? Meaning, did I exchange that service for an equal value of my service? Hell no. <laughs> I said, um, I paid her up, for, she asked me for a deposit. I want to say it was 40, 50%. I paid her upfront in full because I understand the quality of her work. I want to establish a good long-term partnership and relationship with her. I want to honor her work. I want her to feel appreciated in the process. And I love money and she loves money. Why would we not exchange money for this, you know, to give more meaning to this partnership that we're, that we're creating? And just being able to voice that to my friend last night reminded me that talk, me talking about money um, and not from a struggle story, from an appreciation story, from giving it a place to go, from having a desire to make it, um, from being acknowledging of the value that I provide in exchange for that money. It gives permission for others to talk about it and love it too. And money is just such an undiscussable topic and it may be triggering, but find your, if your community will be start to, to you'll repel the people who don't want to talk about money. Don't worry about that. That'll happen by itself. Mm -hmm. And you'll attract the people who like us are comfortable or becoming more comfortable in talking about money. So love and claim that the power of that conversation around money. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as if you were talking about, you know, a new, something new in your life, a new hairdo or something new fashion item, whatever, a new television, whatever, you want to share this wonderful thing and mm -hmm. money can have that same vibration. And then just mm -hmm. one more thing around like loving and making more money for me at the moment in my story. Um, like I said last week, I'm not interested in scrimping and saving. I'm interested in making more. And when I understand the power of money, I want to invest that. I want to invest in myself in the smartest way. I want to invest that money so I can learn things that will help me make more money. I want to invest in myself that puts me in a way that puts me around people who also have money where we can um, energetically connect on that level. I want to feel by investing in myself, I feel like I've got money. I feel wonderful. You know, I, um, you'll never see me these days. Back in the past, I might have been sitting at home coaching on the skinny, you know, in my Kmart T-shirt. Now, for me, you don't have to love Camilla, but it's Camilla all the way, right? And, and other things, suits and things that I love that are high end because I know that it's not about the brand and it's not about how much I spend. It's about how fucking awesome I feel when I invest in myself because it's reinforcing my value. Mm -hmm. And all of this spirals upwards and it just has me feeling better and better. And guess what? That comes through on my Instagram stories and the people who want to work with me and work with that um, you know, level of thinking and vibration go, fuck you, I want some of that for myself and I'll show them how. So mm. I could, that's music to my ears because um, it, you're allowed to want more. I think our generation for some reason has been, like, I mean, we're not post-war, so we don't need to keep the Ziploc bags, although. Our parents were who raised us and installed our values. Framework. That's right. So That's hundred percent. That, and you know what? We, our generations is uh, thrifty. We're philanthropic. We're not. Um, we don't. We don't waste. Maybe the next generation might be a little bit more fluid with that. But um, I think that if you work hard, you're entitled to your fruits of your labor. Yeah. Yeah. If you are going to sit around on Centrelink and hope that the universe provides and not do a damn thing to help yourself, 
Um, like that frustrates me because I think you've got your smart, you're in, you don't have to be the smartest tool, you know, sharpest tool in the shed. You just have to want to, to contribute to society and be part of, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. So um, just wishing for this doesn't necessarily work. I don't know how this is. The girls will know this, but it's the <laughs> tools, it's the actions, it's the, you know, and anecdotally, all I can tell you is that it works. So what you're doing, Ange, when you're saying, um, I'm actually putting in the work. <laughs> so it's not like you're swanning around. And I love that you've respected your photographer enough to go, yeah. you know what, damn straight girl, you mm -hmm. invoice me and, you know, and I'm all over this. Um, that is the best way you support anybody in business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you don't, um, you uh, even investing in yourself, you don't need, you know, $10,000 to do a course. It's literally giving yourself permission to, okay, I'm going to go and walk the dog in 15 minutes time, but you know what, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and I'm going to read the financial part of the newspaper that I've never done in my life because it's boring as, and I don't even think I'll understand it. Or I might actually look up the shares and see what the All Lords are doing. I don't even know what the All Lords is. But if it's in the red, that's concerning. If it's in the green, that's fantastic. <laughs> Except that I don't own any All Lords yet. So if it's in the red, mm. Jody says that's pretty damn hot because it's coming down and that might mean that I'm buying cheaper. Yeah. Do you know? So it's just, um, yeah, horses for courses. But the fact that yeah. we're having this conversation, which is, it makes me so happy. I mean, we, we have to, you know, we don't have to do anything. No one has to do anything. For me, just given the changes and the transformation in my own life since I shifted my money story and I, and I continue to say I'm going, this is always ongoing. There's always a new level, whether it's money or relationships or health, there's business, whatever. There's always new layers to peel back. And I now, with money, am so excited about that. I'm so excited about you know, I have all these little multiple streams of in income and the highlight of my day is opening them up and having a look at them. And I sing, like I sing when I open up my my um, my Bitcoin wallet, my CoinSpot wallet, right? I, I sing, I go, I sing, we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, up, up. Like I sing as, as I'm opening it. And whether it's gone up or not, it doesn't matter, right? I get excited about that. Um, another thing that I do as well is I honor money when it comes in and goes out. And I've shared this before, but I do this slightly differently when I receive it for money. And it's a little add on edge from what you have shared. Um, yeah, I will pay people up front in full. If, if, if it's X, Y, Z and I want their service, then I'm going to pay X, Y, Z, you know, and yeah. So when people pay me, when it comes into my bank account and I see the, you know, the Stripe or the PayPal or whatever it is, and I see it drop into my account, I say thank you to the, the money coming in and then I invite the universe to replenish the account that it left. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, I love that, Jen. Because um, it's not just about it all coming to me. I want, I, want all, I want all abundance for everybody and abundance for everybody is totally possible. Like it's totally possible. And my part in that, I can't make people be abundant. Um, I'm going to say, if you've got money beliefs, reach out because, oh, yeah. it, you know, like honestly, if you have got money stories and you don't have the money you want, I'm going to really go out on a limb here and say, you have got money beliefs that are rooted in your unconscious mind that will be the block that's stopping you from having everything you desire. Um, so I would get to work on that straight away. And yeah, desire money for everyone. When, when money comes to me, I say thank you and may universe, may you replenish the account from which it left. One of my favorite things to do. And I can, feel I, good. can I touch on that briefly before we go to end? You yeah. know what? A lot of people I meet says, Oh, Jody, you know, I just I just have my job. It's not mm. it's not gonna work for me. I'm not like you guys. I'm not I'm I'm I don't work for myself. So I've just contracts aren't gonna come in from the ether and give me fifty thousand. Um I I exchange time for money. And they're my favorite. Because that's when I can usually do that whole radio. Let's go through your statements. Let's see where you're at. And what else could you be doing? Like, what else is possible? Mm -hmm. Like, you're in this situation right now. 
but this is not the be all and end all. Is this your heart's desire? Do you want to be earning, you know, $30 an hour and, and, and that's it? And if you do, epic. Great. I'm so happy. Yeah, like love that. that. Yeah. It makes my heart happy. If, yep. if you're fulfilled, I'm happy. Yep. Um, but if you want for more, it is possible. So everything that you're saying, Jen, totally possible. Um, so even if you're in a, a career where you're or you're working part time, if you've got small children or you're retired and like I'm just on the age pension, the amount of times I've heard that is ridiculous um, because people then feel like they're trapped and that creates a whole limiting thing around it. As soon as you feel trapped, you know, that's the energy that I don't, again, energy is all I know is anecdotally. Um, I see. I that. love that you connect the anecdotal to the. Because... Oh yeah, <laughs> and I sit in my office, and people go, oh, "I don't know why it's so hard, Jody," and oh, rah, rah. and then I'm like, oh. so "Go see Jen, go see Anne." Yeah, I'll I can sort that feel, shit and out. Sometimes for you. I reach across, you know, and I'm I'm one of those people that have crystals, and my 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 members bring me in crystals found this incredible one Jody that you know like it's amazing um I've got four new ones this week it's amazing so it you know it just I don't know it resonates and sometimes just a big cuddle and because we haven't been able to hug in COVID and now we hug and nobody hugs their bank manager but sometimes when they've come in and they've shared a lot of stuff and and I say it's okay everything's okay we're going to make this work and you know just sometimes a problem shared is a problem halved and um and I love the light that you two bring to this I wish I could take what's in your brains and download it into mine I'd been I, I would like to download what's in yours into mine actually <laughs> I would you know so let's do a Vulcan mind yeah. bell. <laughs> what I'd like to offer you Jody, like a coach can never resist an opportunity even if it's unsolicited but I think you're underselling yourself with your energetic connection to money and your intuitive understanding of it yeah so might, I think you you've might got be it developing on, your girl. vocabulary for it through conversations with us but it is there and yeah Diane agrees thanks for coming and I, I see your Instagram shares I you got a hand handle on the energetics of money there's no two ways about that there's yeah. a story it, there that we can help you with yeah, yeah well you know what you can't have lost as much as I have and not and then had to start again yeah. and start again and not have a story like I sometimes think like you said before I'm an onion and if you start peeling back my layers I'm scared that there might be nothing left so yeah there's <laughs> so always something say, See, Until they shovel sand on your face, there's always something. That'll be, that'll be the beautiful it's the whole point of, of the human experience. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why I love you too. So two things I want to share next. Um, so today I'm in this notebook where I've written some like flash notes for our session. On the previous page was the limiting money beliefs that we dissolved for my client today. And just quickly, her money belief was money's always been a struggle. And she had like limiting beliefs written down the page. And we're like, run a, what's the thread running through that? It's money's always been a struggle. And what she was able to do today is replace that with get ready. Money flows easily. And I always have more than enough. Yes, and that was ma'am. The experience for her today. And can you imagine as a business owner, she's a manufacturing business owner, what that means for her day-to-day, -day, what that means for her family life, what that means for her relationships to not have that money story. And logically, we know that money doesn't always have to be a struggle, that there's all of the options that Joe has laid out. And, you know, you're listening to Jen and I. So we've got the logic of our money story can be easier. But what we know is that in our unconscious mind, it's where all of our emotion and memories and shit gets repressed in there that it won't be, that'll be brought up for resolution. And that's where your stories live that you find so hard to shift. So if you find yourself logically processing that I need to get rid of this money story, I know it doesn't serve me, and yet I can't just seem to let it go. That's where Jen and I can come in with the NLP and the so on. Yeah. And give that yeah, example. The, the, the conscious mind, unfortunately, um, we, we can't shift our shit. And I'm just going to be frank. You can't consciously. shift your shit consciously. You can read every book. You, in fact, that, that's just going to give you more conscious information. The, the place in which this stuff lives is in the unconscious mind and the conscious mind cannot access the unconscious mind. So we can't conscious, conscious our way out of this. And I'm not saying that we can't consciously and logically take aligned action steps, but if you're taking those steps 
from um, from a messy vessel that's got a ton of blocks and baggage and emotional, you know, shit and limiting beliefs and things your mother told you and things your father told you, you know, if you're trying to create from that, it is going to be hard and it is going to feel like nothing works and it is going to be like money is a struggle. It's going to feel like everything's a struggle. Mm. So clean that. My, my invitation to anyone is clean that shit up first, you know, clean that up and then arrive ready to make some changes and then watch how easy it is and how quickly things align for you. I'm yeah. going to just jump in very quickly there. I have seen five lotto winners, Division One, myself personally, as an advisor. They've come in, they've got a ton of money, and very quickly, even when you put everything into play for these people to buy them a house, to work, within two to three years, it's gone. Yeah. So Money, that's unconscious. So I don't, uh, yeah. So I just... Uh, feel like even if the universe wanted to give you everything unless you've addressed a lot of it um, again around your stuff I've done a lot of stuff only because I, I have lost millions and I've been on the national stage in the public forum <laughs> as the poster child for the biggest corporate collapse in Australia's history <laughs> um, so I've had to work through a lot of um, stuff around not feeling good enough and and leading the lambs to slaughter and all the things that were said about me. Um, yeah, and so it, it does, it, I, I really feel like when, Jen, when you're saying you really need to shift this and move this, I don't know how you do that. I'm, I just know that you guys do. Um, but I also know anecdotally, if you don't, and you do happen to have money, wealth, uh, inheritance, um, pay increases this time five years you'll still be sitting in that same environment with the same story there's a statistic on good. on the lotto thing people that win money whether it's lotto scratchies or whatever 83 percent of people who win money lose it within 18 months of winning it or have have, have given it all away have lost it or or, or are back to their original yeah. starting point 83 percent Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because their unconscious mind, you know, if it was never safe for you to have money, if it was, um, if you were, if you were going to be judged by your parents for having money, there's a million things around money, right? Um, you will unconsciously make sure you do not have any money if you've got those beliefs living in your body. So if you're right, Joe, you know, if you might, you might be a really good manifester. However. It might feel really hard once you have it and it might feel like it, you know, oh, I just want all this money and now, look, I've got a big bill. Yeah. That's in the unconscious mind, you know, that yeah. you are co-creating that with the universe. Or you're in you every business, you're growing this incredible business, but you're still in this same story. Like yeah. you still have the outgoings. You're, you're still not getting to that level. That was me, Joe, with my yeah. women's fitness business. It yeah. brought in a lot, a lot of money. And yep. somehow I still seem to have no money. Like, yeah. yep. like it was always hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you're, and you're not alone. That's normal. That's right. <laughs> Which is yeah. why anyone listening to this is not normal yeah. and amazing. So that and now I work less than, and, and back then I was up at five in the morning. I was working till midnight, seven days a week, raising two kids on my own, no financial support for my hubby, ex hubby. Um, he was unwell. So I just, this is, you know, we have a beautiful relationship, he and I. I love him to bits. Um, however, all that said, now I, uh, I work way less hours. I do not have a client until 10 a.m. every day because I'm if jealous. I don't set myself up for that, um, I'm going to end up being in that same situation. And I, for a long time, wouldn't allow, I once said to, I'm, I'm just going to share this because I think this is really a key little story. I once said to someone, a mentor that I loved and respected, they asked me what my dream, you know, what was my dream life, right? And I said to not work very much and have a shit ton of money. And he said to me, that's a bit selfish, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And this was maybe... 12 years ago, or oh, say 10 years ago. And I felt so shut down and like, oh, 
oh, so so that it's not okay. That's not okay to work less and earn more. You've just like this guy I loved and respected shit all over my big dream. I thought it was brilliant. And, and I went into this real repressed state around it, you know, that, well, I guess if I want him to love me, I better keep work getting up at five in the morning and working till midnight so that I'm worthy of anything I have. And what I ended up having was not much because it was just seemed to just, it was just so misaligned. This is, you know, why I talk about the aligned woman now. You know, I'm aligned with my money. I'm aligned with love. I'm aligned with my relationships. I'm aligned with my health. Yeah. Yeah, and you get to have it any way you freaking want it. (laughs) I might just offer a little framework myself around this. So in the last two episodes, we've talked about the necessity for strategy and energy to come together and for there to be both. So what Joe has just offered us today is all of the tasting courses around strategy if you like around where to win where your money can accumulate in shares property and cash Um, in business there's strategy for growth and scaling and working more efficiently working less making more Um, and employment as well there's strategy for you to advance your career to get pay rises to get bonuses to be invited to executive tables to be offered professional development to be seen heard noticed awarded recognized right there's strategy for all of that and um, like there'll be lots of leadership coaches out there as well who will just do strategy Um, what I now understand through my personal development and over the last seven to 10 years and certainly from hanging out with people like Jen (laughs) is strategy and energy need to come together and so for me when I've got those strategy things in play and I have a strategy in my business about how I attract clients um, I don't go to them they come to me it's got a lot to do with the socials and the LinkedIn and so on I have a specific strategy that I run I show up for every day regardless of whether I feel like it or not If I don't feel like it, I find a moment when I can or do feel like it. I find the feels, right? Um, So I run that strategy. And then the two things in the energetic space that mesh with that for me are dissolving those limiting beliefs around what I can do in business, the sort of quality of life that I can have, aligning my purpose and career and lifestyle with money, you know, dissolving any beliefs that might imply that that's not possible. Um, Any limiting beliefs that are holding me back, we dissolve those. And then the most beautiful part of this, the icing of the cake and the energy side of things, is that when I'm running those strategies and when I'm doing the work of dissolving those beliefs, and I mean doing the work, like I'm running, I don't just think about them and think it would be nice to dissolve beliefs. I do the work, I run the processes and share that with my community. Um, The icing on the cake when you're running your strategies, you're dissolving your beliefs is letting go and trusting. Yes, mama. But you don't need to do more. You don't always need to work more, work longer, do more posts on social media, approach more clients, make more cold calls if you're in business. You don't always have to be first in and last out of the door if you're an employee in business. You don't always have to do more. Sometimes you can just... Apply your strategies, dissolve your limiting beliefs and let go and trust. And it's and if, if I've ever in business had a moment where I've gone, damn it, I've been working hard on my strategy. I've been pumping up the, you know, the social media presence, the visibility, I'm speaking and blah, blah, blah. And it's not working. My mentors who I pay remind me, Ange, you're doing the do. Let go and trust. Mm-hmm. And what do you know? The phone mm-hmm. ring. And it's Every good Every time. Quality. It's good quality. So I get to work with great quality uh, national and global companies. And I don't know how they find me, but they ring in that moment that I let go and trust. Yeah. That's key. The, the it's key. Yeah, it's 100% key. It really yeah, is. And they wouldn't be calling you if you, if you didn't have the runs on the board. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, absolutely love what Anne just, just shared there. Um, the, the trusting piece is a, 
and and also uh, the energy. Really working out for me tonight. Sorry, Jen. The energy of showing up. So a, a really key piece in, mm. and Ange, you know, Ange knows this, and I've shared this with Ange, you know, extensively, is and so Annette and Diane, you know this as well. Um, a really key piece for me in aligning with my own energetics and my own vibration was to understand and connect to my womb understand that all of my power and creativity exists there women are so blessed that we have a cycle whether you actually have a cycle or you don't have a cycle you have a cycle so do men I just work with women when you can understand your cycle and understand you, the energies within your cycle, you will suddenly not have chronic fatigue. You will suddenly not have adrenal fatigue. You will suddenly not have all of these associated lifestyle illnesses that we are looking for cures for when really all that's going on is you're trying to be an apple tree that's producing apples 24-7. We're not meant to be producing apples 24-7. Apples just produce apples in the, in the summer. Then they go into autumn and they need to rest and regenerate. Then they go into winter where it looks like they're doing nothing, but they're drawing nutrients up from the earth. Then they blossom with little ideas and creativity in spring and then they make apples again. Every single woman has this cycle. And if you're trying to run your business as an apple tree, making apples 24-7, you will have chronic fatigue, you will have burnout, you will have adrenal fatigue, and you will also find making money hard, business hard, showing up in your business will be hard, all the things. So, yeah, for me it's foundational in, in when I work with women is having them Tune in, understand your own personal code. Every woman has their own personal code, every woman. Understand when you are in your masculine energy, your spring and summer. Understand when you're in your feminine energy, which is your rest and rejuvenate. And if you start to make your business calendar align with that, you will be pumping out apples that everybody's going to want to be buying and they're going to be lining up for when they when they turn up again in the next month. And you are going to be so energized and so in love with what you're doing because you're honoring your own energy first. So, yeah, it, it, we have to have a look at that, Angie, and I so love that you brought that up. It, it's not just it's, it's not about just showing up in your business. It's how are you showing up in your business and are you showing up, um, you know, aligned with the energy and where you are? You know, when you're in your feminine energy, when you're in the two weeks when you're in your feminine energy, you can adjust your posts to reflect that. You can speak a different language to actually, I work with women, so I can speak the language of women when I'm in that phase. So it's not there's something wrong with me, everyone's ahead of me, everyone's winning, everyone's beating me, which is how I used to be. I now really honour that that time. And for me, you know, for me if you all want to know, if you t TMI, between new moon and full moon for me, I'm in my feminine energy. So I'm, I go much slower. I, I don't rush and, and I linger in the moment much longer. And there's so much wisdom in those moments if we linger there. And a couple of the women know my hashtag, you can't make this shit up, but you have to linger in the moment long enough to receive it. And no, you're not meant to be producing apples 24-7. <laughs> going to take an opportunity we've only got three minutes left on the call but just to invite any comments we haven't done that yet on this call to invite mm, that's what comments. happens in the after dark series <laughs> from those who are on the call just letting us know like as we're offering our key takeaways to you we would love for you to offer your key takeaways from this call to us as well because we read those all of your comments that are coming through so mm, we would love amazing. to see you i might just ask um Jody, to summarize what what the big takeaways from this call have been for you um we're always learning we're always learning about every aspect of anything love that um, you know i've got master's degrees and i turn my hand at all different aspects of finance and you still am always learning um economic cycles all sorts of things right through to the cycle that Jen was just talking about, which had me riveted. So um, maybe, 
<laughs> never feel frightened that uh, things are too scary or, you know, you learn at your own pace. Um, yeah. Things will come to you as you need it, like the Toyota. And, you know, just trust, I guess, like uh, Jen was saying before, and Ange, that um, you're where you're meant to be. You're where you're meant to be. So, and then seek the experts to help fast track it. Yes. Because you don't have to do this shit by yourself. Agreed. And if you're going to, you know, the whole idea of anybody in these environments is that we've been there. We've been there. Oh, we've yeah. We've done the hard yards. We've worked out how to fast track this crap for you. Um, and if it, if, and all I can say is that um, if I had known what I knew 30 years ago, I would never have gone through what I did. Um, but it's the magic of hindsight that now gives me that wisdom to be able to teach more around me and share more. And, um, yeah, look, longevity is the key. You try not to do anything too um, radical around your money. No black and red on the casinos or things like that. Um, just slow and steady wins the race. So, yeah, love, yeah, that's pretty much Beautiful. Thank you, Joe. I'm just loving some of the comments coming in here. Thank you for offering those guys, Justine and Diane, so far. Jen, what are your takeaways from the call? Uh, my takeaways are, 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 it's just the simplest piece, Ange, and it's this, if you want to be, if you want to create success, it is strategy and energetics, and it is about merging those two things together. Um, they're not exclusive, and if you try and keep them exclusive, it is going to be hard if you can begin to do the work to understand, especially if you're a woman in business, especially if you're a woman in business. I see so many burnt out, adrenally fatigued women. I was one of them um, and it doesn't need to be that way. If you can understand your own energetics and then get experts like Ange and, and Joe that have the strategy, I'm, you know, I'm all in on learning from other women that can help me with strategy because that's not necessarily my, it's not the strength in my wheelhouse. However, I can support, um, yeah, with the energetics. So they, they must go together. And that's when you, that's what alignment is to me. And that's when you feel this beautiful ease and flow. Like I love strategy now because I, 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 I merge it with my energetics. And, and so I don't hate it now. I love it. I actually love it. It's fun. And yep. money is the same for me now. It's fun. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Jen. I think my takeaways are face into it, learn about it, talk about it, embrace it, claim it, lean towards it, allow it to come towards you. That would be my takeaway from this yeah. call. Yeah. So we have one more call to go in this series, which is a bit sad. We might have to think of other things to talk about. <laughs> uh, but it's what are we going to do, Ange? This is series two. No, for right? Us. I know, yeah. right? The corporate, the mystic, and what? Want to think about that? Maybe if you guys have any ideas for the next series, corporate mystic and the something. Um, <laughs> the money just rolled. Learn about it. Yeah, <laughs> something you want to learn yeah. about. Let us know in the comments. We're oh, like fishing for ideas. Um, so we've got one more call. It's next Wednesday night as well because um, Thursday wasn't going to work. Calendars. <laughs> but working yeah. three working women here. Um, so, Joe, have a beautiful time in Tassie. Post a lot of pictures thank for you. us. Yeah, thank you. Girl. My home state. Yeah. Yeah. I love Tassie. I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for that. What part thank of Tassie, you. Joe? The north or the south? Hobart area. Yeah. Yeah, I did a tour a couple of years ago around the whole thing, but this is just a four-day fly-in, luxury escape, fly home. Mm. Hobart's divine, absolutely divine. Yeah, I know. Diane, you were in Hobart not long ago. Were you in Tassie? So many people went to Tassie last year. It's like every <laughs> man and his dog holidayed in Tasmania. It was yeah. so good. All my friends, some of my friends stayed. Some of my friends <laughs> left the sunny coast no, the other and day now live, live in Tasmania. <laughs> Yeah. So one parting comment, um, follow us. So well, you might be friends um, or connected with us on LinkedIn and that's where we post all of our businessy things. The real action is happening on Insta and Facebook and in our stories for all of us. It's for all you, of us. We're, we're real Instagram see, girls. 
it's really where you get to see the behind the scenes thinking and how we're pro- like uh, we all share a lot of how we're processing stuff that's coming up in our life and um yeah so that's the place to be if you're not following us on facebook or insta yet jump on there and of course linkedin connect go ahead and we're, we're right here waiting to chat to you so and if you have any questions guys um reach out please reach out you have the contact information for both Ange and for joe and for myself in the emails you know i'm an fbi stream very easy to find on social media so if you have questions or there's anything that we've shared and you'd love to know a little bit more about it maybe you want to know a little bit more about the strategies and you know or you want to know more about the property and the stocks and the cash or you want to know a bit more about the energetics you know reach out um yeah we're we're very transparent and we're here to support you you know i'm here to see everyone rise yeah all right jen what do you think we enjoy we might sign off there what do you think we can feel incomplete absolutely feeling very complete thank you and thank you to everybody being so flexible and making it tonight and next week because that's really super helpful and um yeah so thank you yeah and i'll have the replay out tomorrow um i will be clocking off (laughs) you're welcome justine thank you so much for thank you justine Justine. thank you thank you diane so beautiful to have you here bye guys thank you